Hello everyone, we're having a uh, Georgism debate today uh, with Happy Cynic. How are you? Good, thanks. How you going? Yeah, I'm going pretty good. Um, I suppose um, I think the you were saying you were disagreeing with uh, the NEP and or Georgism, so I assume uh, you're pro-Georgism yeah, because they... you don't think the NEP is correct. Uh, not exactly, but I just thought that your um, justification or your um, criticism of Georgism seemed to be based on the NAP, which I also disagree with. Uh, but I thought you, yes, I just thought your argument against Georgism didn't make much sense to me. Okay, um, I suppose I could start with um, not necessarily an NAP uh, based argument, you know, I won't, you know, we could go into that in a bit, but, you know, to start off with, I would say uh, one argument against the Georgist ethic, which wouldn't invoke the non-aggression principle, would be that it's impossible to obey the Georgist ethic in the first place because human action itself implies that you're taking initial possession of different means, which is uh, defined as homesteading. Right, yeah, and why, is, why does that refute Georgism? Because the Georgist ethic would have it that uh, homesteading is criminal, surely, because uh, that would be the justification as to why you're allowed to have a land value tax, because taking possession of things is criminal, or is that not? Uh, do you have like a different justification of the LVT? Um, well, there's still, uh, as I understand, I mean, I'm not exactly an expert, but uh, I understand that the, you still have possession of land in that system, and the land is still allocated to different people, right? So it's just like any other system of land, including your own, whereby you just have some sort of agreement of how uh, the scarce means is allocated. Right, but then, you know, if that's a just possession, then it wouldn't be criminal, so there would be no justification for invoking the tax, uh, I would imagine, unless there's like a different justification, which I, you know, I might be um, leaning heavily into the geo-anarchist justification of it, but you might have a different justification. So like, what would be your justification for the land value tax? Well, that it's a good way of efficiently allocating who gets what because the market's determining the value of the land, which determines the uh, tax. And so it just seems like an efficient way to do it, right? Right, but something could, you know, be efficient without being just, right? Um, I, I think everything which is, um, I think there is an overlap in what is efficient and what is just, but just because something is, you know, you could say has good consequence, that doesn't mean it should be done. Uh, okay. Well, then I suppose the, the justification is uh, that it's efficient and also that it, it maximizes some sort of utility, I guess. Because okay. everybody's more like, you know, you're not going to get a monopolization of all the land. You're not going to get people speculating on the land. And you're not going to get people just sitting on land and it's unused when someone else can use it. So all of those things, if you prevent those, then it just seems like that's a justification in itself, isn't it? You don't want people wasting the resource. Right. Um, I think uh, utilitarian arguments are um, faulty because um, I suppose we could go over the... Because some people mean different things when it comes to uh, utility, right? Uh, some people might say that it's, you know, the standard would be like it's happiness, your level of satisfaction. Uh, somebody might think like, well, I am a chicken utilitarian, so I want to maximize the number of chickens being born and what have you. So, like, um, I suppose a good way to um, figure out what type of utility you think we could go through the different categories of data. So, like, there's... Um, sorry, I'm just getting up my notes for utilitarianism right now. Uh, Sorry about this, I didn't realise there was going to be a utilitarianism point. Uh, so yeah, basically like, um, you know, there's uh, nominal data, which is just going to be like true statements, like stuff like we are currently debating on Discord, uh, I live in Scotland, stuff like that. Um, and the next category of data would be uh, ordinal data, where it's a ranked list. So like, you know, if uh, you have people finishing in a race and all you're ca taking down is what order they're finishing in, the order that they finish in would be an ordinal data type, so like first, second, third, so on. 
the next category would be uh, interval data. So something like a temperature where you can say that, uh, you know, 10 degrees Celsius is five degrees more than five degrees Celsius. But you can say that 10 degrees Celsius yeah. is twice as hot. And then above uh, interval data would be ratio level data where you have some objective zero point. So like a Kelvin scale, you know, uh, you could say that 10 Kelvin is twice as hot as five Kelvin. Or the other uh, example would be uh, distances. So, uh, you know, zero centimeters is equal to zero inches and equal to zero miles. So they all have the same objective zero point. So you can talk about double the length of something, right? So what would you classify utility in there? Um, hmm, that's kind of hard. Uh, I guess that probably maybe the last one. So you can have no utility. You can be, you can have no happiness, can't you? And then I guess you've got displeasure as well. So you've got two different scales of pleasure and pain, and you're trying to maximize one and minimize the other. And they can both go down to zero, I guess. All right. I mean, um, but what would it mean to have like zero happiness, right? Yeah, because everyone's dissatisfied at some amount of all the time. Uh, I don't know. Just if you feel zen, you're just like empty mind. Um, well, surely somebody you who's zen, they're, they are, you know, they think being in that zen state will benefit them more than not being in that zen state. So they're happier being zen than not being zen, right? Uh, so you're saying you're always a little bit happy? You are always taking the course of action which you think will make you the happiest, right? Um, that's the, that's yeah. sort of what I'm getting at with utility. I think utility is an ordinal data type. So I might, uh, you know, I have different options for uh, dessert, right? I might have chocolate cake, or I can have a tiramisu, or I can have like a tea. And I might prefer mm -hmm. chocolate cake over tiramisu over tea. So I think that I will be happiest with the chocolate cake, but if I find out that they don't have that in stock or something, I might go for the tiramisu next. And it's like a it's a scale of preferences rather than like okay. I have five units of utility right now. Uh, okay, yeah, well, fine, we can go with that. Why, but why is that uh, disproving Georgism anyway? Well, that would um, create a bit of a problem for any uh, utilitarian ethic because it means that you can't really compare this. You, you can't say that I prefer um, chocolate cake more than you prefer chocolate cake. That doesn't really make sense. You can't compare utilities between people, and you couldn't really... I suppose you could maximise it in a Misesian sense, but that seems to not be... But you don't, you don't have to compare it, do you? All you have to do is say, uh, we all like chocolate cake, so let's maximise the chocolate cake. But in this case, it would be, we all like land, so let's maximize the so we all get to use um some bit of land or maximize that possibility right but you couldn't you know let's uh, take the chocolate cake example then you couldn't maximize chocolate cake production without also taking away from other areas of happiness so if we rearranged all means in society towards uh, making chocolate cake those people who like tiramisu are suddenly you know they're out the out, you know how do we how do we decide right this preference is the best preference, and we're going to maximize this only. Well, if we just agree on which preference we like, then that problem goes away, doesn't it? But then what, what about when people don't agree? It only things? matters if there's, competing, if, if there's competing values or something like that. Well, like, yeah. But that's going to apply to any, that's going to apply to any system where you're, where you're uh, you know, dictating who gets what land, right? There's always going to be some people that disagree or something, and it's just whether you agree with it or not. Right. That particular uh, system. There always can be disagreements over who owns a particular thing, and then you know, because the, things are scarce, right? So there can be conflicts over their use. The question is, how do you decide which side of this coin gets to win the conflict? Because only one person could win the conflict. If I think that I own a stick and you think you own it, we can't both use the stick for contradictory purposes at the same time, right? No. Uh. So I suppose but it's determined by, I guess, uh, who already owns it and then who's willing to pay the tax on it. So you can avoid those conflicts. Uh, right, yeah, but then, then we have the question of how you determine ownership, right? So I agree that the owner of a thing would be the person who, um, you know, uh, it should win conflicts over its use. But then the question is, how do you determine who owns, uh, who has the property, right? 
I would say it's uh, the nonagrass has the property right. Right. Well, that can. Uh, do you mean like right now? I mean, you could just keep it as if everyone owns the land that they own now. So you just. I mean, I assume your system would be like that as well. You're not going to do a wholesale um, rejigging of every piece of land, right? And it just starts like from now, and then everybody homesteads everything. That would be fucking insane. Well, like, I'm not necessarily advocating a particular system or anything. I'm I'm uh, espousing uh, the legal philosophy behind uh, the objective case of who owns what, right? Um, I would uh, I would advocate that we go into uh, rearrange means towards their owners as opposed to any adverse possessors of those means. But like you know, in like the yeah, but practically, case, how does that work? Because everybody already owns shit, right? So right. you're saying that that's illegitimate because it's not on the basis of the um, first in, first served, or whatever. Well, I mean, plenty of stuff is currently owned by, is currently possessed by its uh, owner, right? But like, um, even if it not under your definition, yes, but that's what I'm saying. My, de I think my definition of ownership is correct, and that's why I want to like get into the different definitions of how you come to own something. So, like, you know, let's say Crusoe on a desert island. He goes up and he takes a stick out of nature. He's the first possessor of that stick. And therefore I would say that he's the owner. Because if he's walking towards the ocean to try and spearfish with this stick, and Friday says, hey, I reckon that stick would be good for stoking my fire, and he tries to take that stick, there's a conflict over the use of that stick. Because the two actions can't go forth at the same time. And uh, we would say that Friday would be a latecomer to that stick. And the problem... With any okay, thing. so it's like dibsing. Do you have dibsing? It's not. Or shotgun? It's not really dibsing or shotgun. It's. Uh, it's when you shotgun possession. the first. Like, because it wouldn't just be. Right, but it's like the first person to be like, I'm going to use that stick. They just get it? Is that the idea? It's not just a mere uh, stating that uh, I own something. It's actually. They have like, to actually use it. Okay. It's actually like taking possession of it, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So take the Queen, right? Do you think the Queen owns all the land that she supposedly owns? No, I think uh, basically all um, of it I don't, is, uh, what? Yeah, sorry. Uh, attained in conquest, right? Yeah, okay. So what do you do? Like, if you implemented your system, cause it, because how do you get, do you go through history with every single piece of land in everyone's history and try and figure out who owns what like my point is we're both in the same problem i don't know like in terms of who owns what right now you've kind of just got to go off what's already happened right unless you're going to do like some anarchy madness well i mean everyone's um, just grabbing what they can or something so. <laughs> okay right well, um, like, i think so that's what you would like you would like to just like burn all the property documents and then well, no, not, and then just not, see what happens not i feel like them. george some georges would be into that what I'm saying is I'm laying out the philosophy behind who owns what. It's uh, kind of I know, and I'm relevant. saying how does it work practically? Well, how it would work practically is the initial possessor has the ownership right. You know, it's whether or not that ownership right is respected isn't really relevant to uh, philosophy, right? Um, kind of. I still, I'm, I'm, so does the queen, the queen initially possesses it now, right? Like she, she's possessing all the shit that she's got. Is she dead? Did she die? I don't know who has it now. Yeah, she, well, I mean, it would be, um, yeah, the king, whatever, uh, King Charles, yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's got the initial possession now, right? If your system oh, no, got no, implemented, no. then he would own all his shit, that's, right? That's what I'm saying. It's not, it, this, uh, ethic isn't like, okay, right, we decide now we're going to implement this ethic and whoever owns things, they are the initial possessor. It's, this ethic is always true. It, it, it doesn't take somebody to say, right now we're implementing it. Rather, it is, uh, you could look back through history. If I had some particular property dispute with uh, King Charles, I think that I own a stick mm -hmm. that he has hung up in his palace. I would say, hey, I actually own that because my great-great-great-grandfather or whatever homesteaded it, and then it was taken by your great-great-grandfather, right? Yeah. So, like, and so you would say that the, the person challenging him is is potentially right so it is you'd have to go through anyone can challenge anything and all the current ownerships are, are basically illegitimate if they don't stand up to your standard is that yes, basically they are, what you're saying they are Ill illegitimate if they are aggressive right okay um that seems very chaotic 
I mean, this is the natural order of things. It's uh, chaos is when you have all these people who are repossessing means away from their proper owner. That's chaos. That's might makes right. Right. Um, well, then what about just a system where you you go with that? So the first person gets to use it, but then they still have to pay the tax. And so you've got that ethic riding on top of the ownership and so as to um, maximize the value of utility and efficiency well, the in the distribution with, of the land. Does that make sense? The problem with uh, having this, uh, you know, asterisk of you also have to pay the tax is that is implying that latecomers to that stick have as good a say to it as I do when I'm the homesteader. Because they're saying, hey, I've done something wrong by taking this stick. So I have to compensate those people I've wronged, those latecomers. But the problem with the latecomer ethic is that it, you revert back to mere possession. But uh, anybody who, whenever you have a conflict over anything, both parties are presupposing that ownership is distinct from possession. I.e. if uh, Friday takes it off Crusoe, he's saying that Zuri couldn't come along and then take it off him. So he's presupposing that possession is not the same thing as ownership. But if you have this thing where latecomers have just as much of a say about how to use a thing as the first comer, then you have mere possession, i.e. Uh, whoever is able to wrestle it off, they own it, but then ownership and possession are not distinct. So we have a contradiction there. Yeah, but I, f I feel like you're just jumping from we all agree to pay the tax to oh, the actually that means everybody's got the same say in, in how the use of the land is. We've all got, you know, the latecomer has the same say in the land those two things don't follow that's the thing we, it's, we don't all agree yeah sure if, if everyone agrees that hey i'm gonna pay you guys because i you know homesteaded this then that's fine uh, my problem is when you're forcing somebody who has homesteaded something uh to compensate others that's a problem because that is a latecomer ethic right okay i think that kind of makes sense it's it's based on that like kind of libertarian taxes theft thing right yeah. which is based on the nap Mm -hmm. So maybe because the NAP seems like uh, stupid to me, so maybe we could talk about that. Uh, sure. Uh, I suppose. What is your issue with the NAP? Well, I was watching one of your videos, um, and it, so I'm kind of trying to like piece together your worldview, right? And um, you were having this discussion with this guy, and he was going like, "Oh, what if someone owns all the water, and then you know he's not given the water, and they're they're gonna." die or whatever and i think your quote was fuck him yeah Does that sound about right yeah so that seems kind of demented right i mean sure it's more demented to uh you know reject moral reality and say ah it's free for all you know just take whatever you can is your is your uh morality based on the nap to the exclusion of any other principle or do you have competing values there I, I don't I don't have any competing values because if you have competing values then you're clearly your uh, philosophy is incorrect if you have any contradictions in it. Uh, the NEP is specifically uh, sets up the bounds of uh, what ethics are justifiable. If you try and claim any make any ethical claim outside of the NEP, then it is necessarily contradictory. But within there's plenty of things you can do within the NEP. Right, uh, for instance, I'm an objectivist. So I would say that suicide is immoral, uh, but it's not a crime to commit suicide, right? Uh, in that it doesn't initiate any conflicts, it doesn't run afoul of the NAP, but it's massively immoral. I understand. So why why do you think suicide, just for an, out of interest, why do you think that's immoral? Um, because whenever you are uh, acting, whenever you're in reality, you know, you are choosing life over death. And, uh, you know, basically you couldn't... If you were to try and say that uh, people should kill themselves, you'd contradict yourself because you're clearly choosing to be alive still, right? Um, it's when you would have to suicide would have to evade reality. You are rejecting reality because you want to be dead rather than alive in reality, and that's basically uh, the issue with suicide. Is to propose a suicide ethic would lead to contradiction, so its negation has to be true, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, that that um, that might work. But so, for example, so say you're walking along and you see a a this kind of I think um, 
So you're walking along in the park and you see a little kid and he falls in the pond and there's no one else around and he's going to drown to death. And you go, oh, I'm actually late for my meeting. Fuck it. Would you say that's immoral? Uh, Letting the kid die? I would say that's probably immoral. So on what basis? Um... This is what I mean. There's competing th- well, You've got other values not... that you're dealing with other than the NAP, which means that the NAP can't be applied absolutely because there might be some other value that's more important. Well, no, no. I, I could never, uh, you know, if, um, if it would require me to aggress to save the child, then I would say, no, don't do it. Right. But um, th- there could never be any contradictions in ethics. That doesn't mean that I uh, know everything there is to know about ethics. Right. Okay. So, but what, what's your reason for for uh, the guy late to his meeting why is he a bad boy well i think it's just uh you know i don't i don't have uh all of my ethics outside the nep worked out i'll be honest uh but i think it would okay probably, it's it definitely seems to me that that is anti-life <laughs> in some way right and then you know the yeah but so the is the nep on. in some instances well no no uh the nep applied you know like when like when some guy's stopping someone from getting water and they're dying that's pretty anti anti-life as well isn't it Right, he shouldn't do it, but that doesn't mean that it's criminal. Like, uh, it's here... immoral, though. So you do think that's immoral? Yeah, probably. Um, oh, okay. Uh, here, here's the thing with um, life as opposed to anti-life. Is, uh, you could... For property norms, uh, there are, you know, either you have the NEP or you have some negation of the NEP. Uh, you know, so either people own themselves and all that good stuff, or other people. Uh, own them, uh, kind of own, you know, groups of people, or nobody owns anybody. Yada yada yada. There's like different yeah, okay. alternatives you can have. The NAP is the only one which can ensure the survival of mankind on principle when applied universally. Every other alternative, the NAP, if you were to try and um, uh, follow it to its letter, it would mean it would imply the death of humanity. Uh, that's basically. The NEP is the only universal ethic, uh, legal ethic, I'll say, the only universal property norm which can, in theory, uh, ensure the survival of mankind. It doesn't mean it necessarily will, but it uh, at least can in principle. Okay, but um, but if you have, um, if you think other certain actions are immoral, don't you have an obligation to to act in accordance with whether or not that's immoral or not? And then what do you do if that conflicts with the NAP? You just go with the NAP no matter what because of what you just said? Well, I don't, I don't think there's ever any action where it's moral, uh, but it's also criminal. I think every criminal action is also immoral. So I don't think there's any conflicts within my ethics. Yeah, but that's just because you haven't bothered to flesh out the other values which you do in fact hold. It's, it's if you flesh like... those values out, then then you might find that there are some contradictions. But you just haven't bothered to do that, which is very convenient. You've got this one principle, and then you go, and then I bring up a counterexample, and you go, oh, well, no, that is immoral, but I don't really know why, so therefore I don't know the value that I'm following for why, so therefore I don't have any competing values which are going to fuck with my love of the NAP. I mean, have you... But this is willful worked, ignorance. Have you worked out the answer to literally every ethical hypothetical out there? Um... No. Right, so then you don't, don't so. You, so then you don't know if there's any contradictions either. Nobody nobody has worked No, but I don't have a, but I don't have a principle. Principles. But I don't have some specific principle that I follow to the detriment of other seemingly valid That's, um moral it, values. It couldn't be to the detriment of any other true values because the NEP is true and truths can't contradict, right? So if there was any contradiction where I said, right, it's actually okay to murder sometimes, that would clearly contradict with the NEP, right? Uh, then it would be then it would be the ethic which it would be the value which drove my oh it's sometimes okay to murder people. That would be the wrong one because the NEP is correct. Right, aren't you just? But you, I thought your justification for NAP was something along the lines of like human flourishing or the negation of the NAP would lead to like human misery or or the end of humanity or something like this you said but uh, that, that doesn't that, is, that doesn't determine its truth that is uh and now you're saying that, it's certainly no, no. true what i was saying there is that's why the nep is pro-life because you were saying well isn't the nep oh, also okay. anti-life uh, my justification for the nep is argumentation ethics so 
uh, if you were to try and dispute the NEP, you'd have to presuppose its truth, and therefore it is true, right? You couldn't dispute it without contradicting yourself. It's the same thing as with any other axiom, like, uh, you know, ooh, uh, the law of non-contradiction. If you try and dispute the law of non-contradiction, you have to presuppose it's true first. Um, you have to presuppose that it's true. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, basically, um, so argumentation, right? When you're having this propositional discourse, that is a human action. And, uh, you know, human action because uh, deals with scarce means. So scarcity is a thing. And, um, uh, it, but, and uh, also argumentation has certain normative presuppositions, right? So argumentation doesn't exist in a normative void. It's not just free-floating propositions. It's actual human actors who have to presuppose certain things uh, in order to engage in argumentation, because there has to be some end uh, to the action, right? And uh, argumentation is specifically, we have some dispute over the truth of the matter, and we're trying to get to the truth, right? Uh, so therefore, we're not, uh, I'm not saying, right, X is true, and I'm going to beat you if you say that X is not true. That's not me trying to get to the truth of X, right? That is me trying to coerce you. So, um, yeah. argumentation is... Um, a conflict-free interaction, therefore, uh, you know, like basically what that means is... Yeah, you're trying, yeah I heard you're one of your debates on this as well. Yeah, yeah, I, heard, I, don't, I don't agree with that argument either, but before, before we go into that, I just had a question um, that came to me, which was, you were saying um, you would never um, initiate conflict under mm -hmm. any circumstances. So, if, if an alien came down and was like, I'm going to if you could, you got to go and pinch your neighbor or yeah. I'm going to rape every woman on earth. Mm -hmm. Am I to understand that you wouldn't pinch your neighbor? Indeed. I would not. <laughs> okay. But that sounds nuts, right? Because you just got every woman raped. No, the alien got every woman raped. Well, I th it was a team effort. I'd say. Hardly. You wouldn't feel any, you, you wouldn't feel bad for that because you could have stopped it and you just didn't. Uh, nope, because I, I did the thing that I should have done. Well, I don't know if the women think that. Well, it's irrelevant. But it's not. I mean, my, like, surely 90... You you must acknowledge that, like, the vast, 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 vast majority of people think that that's immoral and crazy to think like that, right? I mean, I yeah, know it's not the best argument in the world, but... Yeah, most people uh, don't understand ethics, right? I agree with that. Well, I t okay. I think that, yeah, it seems like it's like lo you've got this logical principle and you're following it blindly into these like places where there's mass alien rape and it's not, I mean, that seems immoral to me, but. I mean, what, what's the alternative is having no ethics at all, right? Where it's just, I, well, yeah, I, feel I guess like, like that, I mean, you'd be, therefore I'm going to do it. Right? You'd be better off going with you, just going with your gut at that point and just being like, whatever I feel is the right thing to do. I'll just go with that. Like. Right, Disney then, movie morality or something. But then that's the lack of ethics, right? That is uh, evasion to its complete and utter uh, conclusion, right? You are completely evading reality. You are living in anti-reality of pure whim worship. But if your ethics are leading you to do, I mean, terrible things, what's the... I mean, they're not very useful, are well, they? No, it's, it's not a terrible thing, that's the point. That's why it's the ethical it thing It is, though. But everyone knows that that is bad. It's, it's like I don't even believe you no. when you say that. That you're like, no, I wouldn't feel bad. I mean, like I could just like push okay. that dial all the way up to a hundred. Like everyone's in abject misery because you didn't poke me in the ribs, and you're just going, yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's just like, okay, maybe it's logically sound within your worldview, but it's still crazy and immoral. I, I mean, you know, I mean, it's, point... just, it's just clearly immoral. If you can't see that that's immoral, then so, I don't say, know. I mean, I mean, like just saying, like, hey, this, this, reality. this would be real bad and mean i don't like when this happens that's not really an ethical argument sure. is it uh i mean i think examples like that where you're causing something terrible uh should be but instructive in some way terrible is the thing the aliens causing those terrible well, I mean, things i mean that's almost like into like what i mean who's causing what and the cause it's like trolley problem almost but i mean we, we can um, do the trolley problem uh you know we'll we'll it, Edit it so there's no property rights. I feel like you're just going to bite the bullet and get a lot of people dead. Oh, no, no, I, I, I could do the trolley problem on you. You know, let's uh, flip the script here a little bit. So, you know, a boulder is okay. rolling down the hill, and it's going to crush <laughs> five people, 
uh, would you push out yeah. of the way if that would make it crush another person? Yes. All right, and uh, why would that be? And then I'd get, and then I'd get held on the shoulders of the five people and they'd all say, yay, you're awesome. Right, but, then, but why, would that, why would that be the moral thing to do? Because it saves more people. It saves the five as opposed yeah. to the one. Right, yeah. uh, what if instead, um, you know, uh, there was a uh, bus which Oh, crashed. was it the easy one? Yeah, that was the easy it's... one. Uh, oh, the, you no, know, okay. There's a, there's a bus <laughs> bringing a bunch of children to an orphanage. It, it ramps up, don't worry. And uh, this bus, cr bus crashes. <laughs> and these children, they, they have injuries such that five of them are going to die unless they each get a different organ transplant, right? And you've just had this guy who is a motorcyclist, and he's crashed as well. He was in the crash. And you're the surgeon there. You know that you could yeah. uh, take the organs from this motorcyclist who doesn't want his organs taken. He's still alive. And you could save those five children. Would you do it? Um, so it's killing one guy to save the five kids. Is that basically the yeah the dilemma? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's... Hmm. Would I do that? I guess. No, I guess I wouldn't because the, you know, don't kill people and respect people's autonomy and stuff is a norm, which if you break it, it will have sort of knock on effects throughout the whole of society and be bad, right? But I mean, like, you, Does that make sense? in the previous example, you did kill the one person to save the five. But why not in this example when you have to, you know, slice them open? Because, um,. Uh, what's the difference between the two examples? Um, what exactly. is the difference? Yeah, that's that, that's my question to you. Why why the change in heart? Uh, yeah, I know. I've kind of leaned towards kill the guy now, actually, I guess. All right, uh, let's provisionally take that then. Uh, what if he yeah. wasn't a motorcyclist, he wasn't involved in the crash, and, uh, you know, you just have these five children who need organs. Uh, you walk out in the street yeah. and shoot a guy and take his organs. Would that be fine? Yes. Okay. I see. I see the problem here. Um, yeah. See, that seems bad. But I think can't you have competing? So you have like your norm, like don't kill people, and then you also have your kind of some sort of vague utilitarian ethic, both at the same time, and then you're trying to work it out that way. I mean, I suppose they contradict each other. At, yeah. At times, but I'd rather I'd rather occasionally contradict myself and not have every woman on the planet get brutally murdered by an alien than have it consistent but terrible things happen. You see what I mean? Like these examples don't work because the the worst possible example you fail on, right? So you can't bring up one to me and say, Oh well, you know, this example's bad, you're acting in a bad way. I feel like you're appealing to my ethical uh, intuitions which already fail your system but then the issue is you you said yeah sometimes i contradict myself you know you contradict on some things but therefore you're wrong right contradictions are false so then you're not making an argument you're saying yep this is incorrect but i'm just going to say it anyway right so then like w i'm correct you're incorrect so is that that's like a concession right um, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, I haven't, I mean, I haven't got my ethical view, uh, properly fleshed out, obviously, but I just think, I mean, I wasn't assuming that I did. I was more just criticizing yours because you're the one advocating a, you know, position on a YouTube channel, which it ultimately leads to um terrible shit like the example that i already pointed out but you just bit the bullet on that bite the bullet on that so that's that's fine i suppose i suppose we can go back to uh, more issues with the george's property theory so um, you know, um it... i was actually interested to talk about the um that argument from argumentation actually if you want yeah sure um because say you seem to be saying that because argumentation presupposes that argumentation is a good way to resolve the the issue that you're arguing about, and then you extrapolate that out to a general principle, it, and that's just an invalid thing to do, right? It's more that uh, when you're arguing, you're presupposing that the way you dispute should be resolved is uh, but is peacefully. It's by 
discussing the dis the dispute, right? It's not by initiating conflicts. And therefore, you couldn't propose, uh, you know, you couldn't come to someone and say, hey, I have a dispute with you. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to peacefully and calmly uh, explain to you uh, why I shouldn't peacefully and cam calmly resolve disputes with you uh, peacefully, right? It's a contradiction. It's like going up to someone and uh, saying, we should never yeah. argue, we shouldn't be arguing over this issue, right? Then you are arguing over it. Um, right. But you can just say sometimes you should argue and sometimes you shouldn't, and then that doesn't contradict yourself, does it? Right, yeah. But that, and then that, in the that, instances that where you're not issue. arguing, right? You're not, you're not, in the instances where uh, you're not arguing, you don't think that's permissible, you're not contradicting yourself either because you're not arguing, you're just doing the thing and not arguing, right? Sure, you. I, I agree that you're not contradicting yourself by murdering someone. But the point is that you mm. couldn't propose that, you couldn't justify that murder. You couldn't uh, say, hey, I have a dispute over this guy, the use of this guy's body. Uh, hey, guy, I think I should have uh, your body because I want to stab it instead of you. That would be contradiction. Uh, uh, no, so, so I could say um, it's, you can murder someone if you're, um, let's say, if they're, they've got blonde hair or something, right? Well, what that is, I don't, how am I contradicting myself by making that statement? Are you saying I'm contradicting myself by making a statement like that? The contradiction would be uh, in some dispute over this blonde-haired person's body. If you were to try and resolve that dispute peacefully, uh, whilst proposing that uh, you shouldn't resolve the dispute peacefully, right? It's uh, going up to this blonde person saying, "I should murder you." That's a contradiction. But I wouldn't have just murdered them, though. Right? Yeah, but that. I mean, it seems then like what you're saying you're because, like, this it. is the equivalent. Here's the equivalent of what you're saying. It's like I say. We should be we should be silent in the library, and you say and you say no no that doesn't make any sense because if you were in the library and you were saying to everybody hey we've got to be silent in the library you'd be contradicting yourself and it's like what the fuck are you talking about that doesn't mean that you can't make the rule that you should be silent in the library and outside of the library talk about it it just seems like you're you're saying it's a contradiction when it's not because you're talking about two different contexts outside of the context which it applies you can make whatever arguments you want sure sure yeah like um. I suppose maybe I haven't uh, explained that well enough. It's um, when you when you are proposing something, right? If you're proposing an ethic, if you're proposing anything, you are appealing to reason, right? You're appealing, uh, so it has to be like universal. Uh, you know, if I were to, so if I were to make the argument, it's fine for people to kill blonde people. You are making a particular argument. You're making a particular argument about this group of people as opposed to humanity in general. Uh, but then you're not appealing to reason, you're not appealing to the, a norm for the entire set of humanity, right? And uh, so that would be, you know, if I were to then say, right, I need to have a universal... It does apply to the set. Uh, no, it doesn't. It applies to the, to the set of humanity, yeah, it does. It, it, the blonde people, you kill them, and the non-blonde, you don't kill them. There you yeah. go, that's the set of humanity dealt with. Right, yeah, but that's a, one norm for blonde people and another for non-blonde people. Well, I don't think it's a very good norm. It's just, a, I mean, it's obvious, It's an obviously dumb example. No, it's, but... a, it's a particular norm, is my point. Okay, yeah, so what's wrong with that, sir? Because then you're not appealing to reason. You're not appealing to... Because if you were appealing to reason, it would apply to... Uh, everyone which which that which those arguments applied to right it would apply to the entire class of humans because you're making are arguing it does, about apply, norms it does apply to every human no it no it doesn't it's a particular norm you're make, having one norm for one group of people and another for a different group of people that's like the prime example of a particular norm um okay but why why does it um applying to different people differently make it um unreasonable because if you were applying reasons to do that if you're appealing to reason I mean, yeah sure if there are uh you know if there's something if there's a principal difference between blondes and non-blondes like you know maybe uh it, having blonde hair makes it such that you can't engage in human action or argumentation or something like that then yeah that would be a valid difference between these two classes of people but there isn't such a difference so it's a particular norm it's um because argumentation ethics would apply to any being capable of argumentation, right? But uh, so then you couldn't select individual groups within that group and say, here's a norm which applies only to this group. 
because you're talking about the set of in all arguing beings. Um, yeah, okay, so you're saying that you can't make an argument for conflict resolution which um, prescribes something other than argumentation because it doesn't apply to every situation the same? Because that's the, that's the point of the norm is to, is to delineate between two different situations. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I don't see um, the rationality there. If you are appealing, if you're making a normative appeal about, okay, right, here's how the speech should be resolved. Yeah, it would have to apply universally. Like you couldn't, I couldn't say to you, hey, uh, I think it's just for us to go off and murder that other person in a different time or place or something like that. Because that would be a particularistic norm as opposed to a universal norm. Okay. Um, and sorry, you might have already said it. And so what's wrong with the particular, it being particular and applying differently to different situations? Because then you're not uh, appealing to reason because logic doesn't change in different situations, right? Uh, well, no, logic doesn't. But so, so for example, if I say um, uh, you should avoid all conflicts by argumentation, except when someone's uh, depriving someone of something that they need to live, and, and then in that case, you should just kill them and steal it and and save the person's life. Um, that that rule applies universally to every situation. No, it's, it's the same mistake that? that that unless this uh, glob of rules that is making it particular. You're making one norm for one set of situations and another for a different set of situations. Um, I mean, it applies universally. It just delineates. And you're saying that that's irrational because because the logic is the same in the two scenarios. Like it doesn't. It's not the same. Like, you basically like globbed two norms together into a single sentence, right? But then it's still two norms, right? Yeah. But then it's... Um, those yeah, are kind of. I kind of see what you mean. Yeah. So it is particular. It's but, just... Uh, yeah, I know, you know, but you're, you're like... You're, <laughs> but you're, you're like, oh, and, and then that's bad because it will mean two different things in two different situations. It's like, yeah, that's the point of it. But then it's particular. That's what I'm trying to right? do. So you're not, you're it seems appealing, like you're begging the question. But then you're not appealing to reason directly. Um, no, you're 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 appealing to something else outside of reason too. Yeah. But, yeah, but then it's not a so rational what? argument, right? It's not an argument at all. Yeah, it can still be a rational argument. argument Why not? But then it's like you can't get anything saying... done. I think it was like there's some philosopher that says that that it's like the um, what is it? The reason's the slave of the passions. With reason alone, you can't figure any shit out. You need like some other content in there, some some context to. Um, and then you use your reason with that to determine what you should do in different situations, right? With reason alone, you can't decide what, what the hell to do because you don't have any particulars and the, the world is made up of particulars. Right. The world is made up of particulars, but then these norms, they have to apply. Yeah, arguments themselves have to be universal, right? Or else they're not an argument. You're not appealing. If if you're saying, no, I don't care about reason here in my argument, what you're saying is you don't care about truth. You're not talking about the truth of the matter. I'm not saying I don't care about reason. I'm just saying um, to apply a rule which treats different particulars differently, there's, there's not, that's not irrational. It just includes something other than rationality. But that doesn't make it irrational. Well, no, it is irrational because it's a rejection of reason because uh, if you are to appeal to reason, you're appealing to truth. It would have to apply universally. You couldn't say, uh, right, I'm appealing to truth, the truth of the norm for this class, uh, given the nature of this class. Uh, but then I'm going to reject that norm for different individuals in that class, you know, different subclasses. That's not appealing to the truth of the matter. You're rejecting the truth of the matter in exactly those cases. But if I say some animals fly and some animals swim, I'm applying a different... Um principle or description to different particulars but there's nothing irrational about it right so it wouldn't be true of uh the set of all animals that they fly but it, would it be is true. true of all animals no it's do not you think that's it's, it's not, not true of all not, animals it's not true of all it, animals it, that they fly the, the statement some animals fly and some animals swim do you yeah. not think that's true no but i'm saying the class of all animals it is not true about the nature of all animals that they fly 
right? There are. Uh, wait, well, okay, like take this statement. Take the, Okay, do you think this statement is true or false? Animals can either fly or they can't. Yep, that's true. Right, and that applies to all animals, and it's it apply it treats certain animals differently. It makes a delineation between the two, right? Then what you're really doing is you're just defining the same different way that, yeah, classes sorry. of animals, right? I mean, right, really and I'm defining different, different classes, classes of, of actions. Yeah, you can define you can define def different classes of actions, and reason about uh, you know certain uh, truths about the nature of those different classes of actions. I agree there. But then if you're having... But then, okay, a, but I thought you were saying that's irrational because it doesn't apply to all actions equally. No, no, no. What I'm saying is um, uh, argumentation ethics, when you're making a norm for humans, right, uh, the NEP is derived from argumentation as such, so it would apply to all argue all beings capable of argumentation, right? But then you couldn't uh, say, well, there are different types of beings capable of argumentation, so I'm going to reject this universal norm in some cases. I'm going to make a particular norm. That would be irrational. I just don't see how that's rational, yeah, but... Um, yeah, I feel like you're just jumping to a universal case of because you want to, and then saying, oh, that's irrational because it treats two things differently, but then you acknowledge that, no, you can make comments uh, about things and treat them differently, and it's not irrational no, no, no. It's, in the animal's case. It's but, it, it, but in my case, I don't like doing that because of my particular ethics, basically. It's treating two different things within the same class, like uh, the class of arguing beings. It's tre treating different cl subclasses with different ethics. That's the irrational. Well, it's point. not that it's not the beings that I'm treating differently. It's the it's the situations. It's the conflicts that I'm treating differently. Right, but then it's this, still the same issue, right? You're you're you are, are re, you're reasoning about the nature of conflict in general, and then saying except for these situations, which are also conflicts. That is the particularization. But what's the difference? What's the difference between saying some conflicts need to be resolved with violence and some don't, and saying some animals can fly and some don't? In both cases, I'm just making a sta I'm just making a categorical statement about um, some particular thing in the world, and I'm making a delineation. And then you're saying, in one case, it's just inherently irrational, and the other, it's not. And it's, I don't know why you're making that move. It's because the claim would have to be if I'm making uh, if I'm reasoning about conflicts in general, right? Uh, trying to d d uh, discern truths about conflicts in general, or rather disputes in general. Right, I am reasoning about the nature of dispute as such, you know, argumentation as such. And if I'm reasoning about dispute as such, uh, I would have to accept uh, non-aggression because I'm reasoning. I'm not just going out there and slaughtering, right? Um, so that seems like a different argument because you were saying that it was irrational because it wasn't universal. And now you're just saying because argumentation itself is non-violent therefore um it you can't presuppose that violence is okay while arguing and those are two different arguments right they're, they're, you've jumped from not, one argument not, to another they're not different arguments because when i'm talking about no, reasoning, reasoning about dispute as such that is talking about universal about disputes as such is so if i re reasoned any truth about disputes as such a dispute qua dispute then it would have to apply universally to all disputes. That's the universal part. If you just substituted an animal for disputes there, then you then you change your mind, right? Yeah, but then if we're talking about animals, I couldn't reason about animals as such that they fly. I couldn't reason that. That would be incorrect. Right, and I can't reason about disputes. fly or fly or not fly, or in some in some cases animals fly, in some cases they don't. Right, that's the equivalent statement. It, what what you're saying there is uh, you're setting up two different classes of uh, animals. Like I don't see there being two different classes of disputes. Like yeah, you well, could, you, you could yeah, arbitrarily yeah, you <laughs> say disputes where they're wearing, wearing red shirts as opposed to blue shirts. You could cut that cut it up that way, but that doesn't change the logic about disputes as disputes, right? And argumentation ethics applies to disputes as disputes. Right, but if so, it applies to disputes as dispute, and you have to treat them all the same. Um, I just don't think that you've justified that by saying 
that argumentation is non-violent, and so therefore all conflicts must be um, resolved that way. It's that those I just those two things don't follow from one another. You need some extra premise in there, which you're not, well, which maybe you're like, setting is how, missing. How how would you let's let's imagine that I want to uh, justify violence in disputes where people are wearing red shirts? Like, how could I do that? What is the principal difference of wearing a red shirt as opposed to not wearing a red shirt, as it pertains to justification? Right? What is the principal difference there, which would make a where I could reason differently about that? Well. You could give any justification you want, right? And then, and then the argument I mean, re the, relies on whether or not your justification is justified, right? But you're saying no, 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 no. It doesn't matter. You just, you just, as of definition, you can't give a definition. Uh, you can't give a justification because of my weird universal rule that I've made up. You see the I, difference? I haven't, like, I haven't, why are you asking me for a justification? Because your argument is that there is no justification that can possibly be given. Isn't no, that no, what you're I'm, saying? I'm, as I'm asking you. How can you? Can you set up for me these different classes of disputes? You know, uh, one which should be resolved violently, and one which should, should be resolved peacefully. Like, what, oh, sure. what are these red, different red, classes? Red, what red, shirts are red shirts are immoral, and they don't deserve to be argued with reason, because fuck them. Well, demonstrate that red shirts, uh, that you in, in cases where there are uh, people are wearing red shirts, that... Uh, those disputes should be resolved violently. Can you demonstrate that? What is right, the, exactly. So, so, so it depends on whether difference? my justification is. So it depends on yeah, whether depends my whether justification is valid. Yeah, it depends whether you're correct. I, I agree there. Okay, so if I gave a justification, then that argumentation ethic would just fall apart, right? Because well, now we're just arguing yeah, over able, whether you're or able I have to a... disprove argumentation ethics, then it would fall apart. Yes. Right. So if I have some other value that I'm trying to uh, further, like the happiness and well-being of humanity, then um, that could be my justification. And if that's something that you are interested in and want to do, I understand it's not because you want aliens to kill the women and stuff. But if that was something that you wanted, then you wouldn't give a fuck about argumentation ethics and you wouldn't be being rational either. You just hold the principle which the vast irrational. majority of people do hold. Sim simply, and you're following that ethic. Simply saying, there's nothing I, rational about it, right? Simply saying that, well, I want happiness and well-being to be promoted. That isn't an argument, right? That is not a justification of. That is not setting up a principal difference between one set of disputes and another set of disputes, right? It's just. Well, it is, what if, you it is if you. It is if you agree with that principle, there, right? I, I, no, no, no. It, my, my agreement or disagreement with that principle doesn't pertain to this. Right. It, what matters is whether or not you can set up a principal difference between one set of disputes and another, which means that one set uh, ought to be resolved violently. But I have. I just said the principle. You, no, no, no. You if you don't it. like the principle, that's fine. But no, the principle was. But I have uh, given you the. I have given you a principle. No, I mean, you can ask me why, why, over and over again, right? But and nothing, you know. No, all all you said was, well, I feel like uh, disputes should be resolved. Some disputes should be resolved violently. That isn't setting up yeah. well, why. What is the principle which would delineate this? Well, now you're just asking me why over and over again. You go, I go, some some disputes should be resolved violently and some shouldn't. You go, why? And I go, well, because I hold a principle that you should maximize human happiness. And then you go, why? No, no, I'm and not you, asking I mean, you why can just you do hold that definitely. You're, but why does your holding of that principle make this set different? Like, reason about why this set should be resolved violently. That's what I'm asking. What is the principal difference between this set, which should be resolved violently? Is that because it will should... maximize the principle that I hold? But that's, that's just saying, well, then th this would get my way. That doesn't matter whether it would get your way. That isn't an argument as to why they're different. Why they're different? Well, they, they are categorically different, right? The, the two yeah, disputes. Yeah, they different in like a relevant if, way. Like if one dispute, like if one, if one dispute um, or one conflict they're relevant to the utility in different ways, such that some should be resolved by conflict and some shouldn't. Right. And that's it's just on the basis of that, a determination of whether or not. It's that such that. It? It's that such that they should be resolved. Uh, one should be resolved this way, and the, that's what I'm asking. Like, what? How can you reason about this? Set? Do you want an example of a conflict, or I'm not? I, I don't understand what you're. No, no. I understand that there, you can split up conflicts into different types, and they will have yeah. differences. But the question is whether those differences are relevant to the question of whether they should be resolved violently or not. 
Yeah, and they are they are because, for example, like you could have a conflict where, um, like the water example, and that's an example where you'll maximise human flourishing by not arguing about it and just killing the guy, right? So Sorry, that's, say that again. That's why they. So the example with the water, right? Like the guy's not giving the water or whatever. Well, that's an example where vice would be justified because it maximizes the utility. But why? Why? Under the yeah, principle I'll, I'll of just assume that it maximizes utility. Why does the fact that it maximizes yeah. utility mean that this set that this set of disputes, which maximize the utility, if you've solved them violently, why does that mean that you should resolve them violently? That's the question. Why is that it would maximize utility? Because, the irrelevant difference. Because you should. Because whether or not you use violence should be, is determined by whether it will maximize utility. Why is that? Because I want to maximize utility. <coughs> so it's true because you think it's true. No, it's true because I want to maximize utility. Why does your wanting? Why does why does the fact that you want to maximize utility mean that disputes where you where it would maximize utility use violence? Uh, you should use violence. That doesn't follow. Um, no, it follows if you if you hold the principle that you should maximize utility, then it follows. But you just don't hold the principle. I, but do, do no, you see no, no, what no. I mean? You, if you do hold the principle, then I'm being completely rational. I'm just saying I want to maximize utility, and there's certain conflicts where you should result to to maximize that utility. There's certain ones you should use comp violence. There are some that you shouldn't, and there's no inconsistency there. You just don't like the principle that I'm basing it on, which yeah, is fine. That's that's just you but, saying. Um, I feel like dispute should be like you saying. I think dispute should be resolved violently if it would maximize utility. Your feeling that they sh it should be done that way doesn't make it so, right? Your belief doesn't necessarily imply that it's true. Oh, yeah, so you, do you want a justification of the principle of yeah. maximizing utility? Uh, of uh, right, okay. Well, I can't, can't I don't... maximize utility. I can't. Oh, sorry. What did oh, you say? Oh, of resolving disputes violently insofar as it would maximize utility. So, why is that good? No, I'm, a I'm asking yes. you for a justification of the principle that disputes should be resolved violently if it would maximize utility. Oh, okay, that's easy, because you should maximize utility. Then you're just... You're just that's a, that's then, a valid justification, should, isn't it? It's, it's not. I mean, it's... Like, why why, no, why no, is no, it no, the case that... It's valid, it's valid in so far as it, uh, it's logically valid. Like, it's, it's valid but not sound. Necessary, right, it's then, not necessarily sound, but it's valid. That, but that's a perfectly rational truth. thing to say. Why do you want to um, resolve conflicts in such a way that maximizes utility? Oh, because I think you should maximize utility. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, that's why you want to do it. But that, that's why you want to do it. That hasn't demonstrated the, it to be true, right? No, it's shown that the truth of it is, um, is dictated by whether or not the principle of maximizing utility is true. It has done that. Right, so demonstrate that to be true. Right. Okay, fine, but now we're just talking about my justification, right? Yeah, we've been talking about that the whole time. And you... Yeah, I know, but I'm saying, like, I feel like when you use the, the argumentation ethic, you're, you're making a, a different point about how actually the justification doesn't matter and you couldn't possibly give one for a rational reason. But in terms of giving you a reason for the, for the maximizing utility, um... No, I can't. I can't give you that. It's just a moral intuition that everyone has. Thank God, apart from you. But then it's just then your argument basically comes down to well, I feel like some disputes should be resolved violently. But then we, you haven't well, demonstrated there to be I mean... a reason, a principal difference. Right? All you've demonstrated is well, I think there's a difference. But you you have to get to some basic uh, principle when it comes to ethics at some point, right? That I mean, you can't justify infinitely. Right, you have so when to, I say you maximizing, have to yeah. reason down to a, an axiom, right? Something indisputable, and then it'd be true. Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Right, but that, you haven't done that. You've right, you've you've taken it down to, uh, well, I think these sets are different in a re in a relevant way, uh, therefore they're different in a relevant way. But that's that doesn't follow. Yeah, I mean, the the asking for a justification of the maximizing of the utility is like asking for a justification of why ice cream tastes nice. 
it's like no, that's no, it's that's not. retarded it's a, it's just like i i like it's like an evolutionary thing where it's just like built into your brain that you don't like other people if you're a normal human being you don't like other human beings suffering and that's that and if you go well, justify it it's like well i don't need to justify it because it, for the same reason i don't need to justify that ice cream tastes good it's just that's how you feel and then you try and figure out the best way to push that value and if someone fundamentally just doesn't agree with the value, they're like Ted Bundy and you just kill them. Well, no, I, I, what, what I'm getting at here is, uh, you know, you are saying that there's one set of disputes which should be resolved peacefully and another which should be resolved violently. But your demonstration that uh, this set of disputes which you think should be resolved violently is in fact relevantly different to the other set is because you think it's different. But we already know that you think it's different, right? What we need to do is have you prove yeah. that it's different. I've given you the basis on which I think it's different, though. I, I know you've given me the basis on why you think it's different. We haven't proven it to be different. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it, it is objective. Well, I mean, it, they just they just categorically are different. Like, if if you're saying, if I'm saying, I, I agree. The, I agree, they're different, but I'm like, how I is whether it, they're um, relevantly different. Yeah, but as I said, that just depends on whether or not you care about the the principle that i'm using or not no, and you it, don't it doesn't it doesn't depend on what i oh okay or what you i don't understand then it depends on what is correct right uh, you need to show that it is is actually relevantly different it doesn't matter whether i agree with you or not what matters is if it's correct okay so you want me to show you that you don't want me to show you that the the instances are different you want me to show them that they're relevantly different yeah what do you mean by that? What what I don't so, understand what you're wanting. Dif different in a way such that uh, the the diff the principled difference, the difference in uh, you know you you flip the one principle, and that principle when you flip it, it means that those disputes should be resolved violently as opposed to non-violently. The example I gave was of wearing a red shirt. That would be the one example of a principle where a e yeah, where there but, red the, shirt but and the principle is maximizing utility. Right, so yeah, so then your your principle would be well in a dispute where it would maximize utility, then you solve it uh, violently if it would maximize utility that way. But I want to know yeah. why that why why right. is it that maximizing utility? Why does that cause this flip? Why is that relevant? Yeah, right, and that's because I want to maximize utility. That's no, why that's no, relevant. It, but I feel like we're talking in circles. Like uh, the difference that I feel like is that you have these moral principles that you've worked out and then you try and just like force your moral intuitions into that box whereas i'm the other way around and i'm like i have my moral intuitions and then i try and extrapolate principles out from them but it's the intuitions which are the important bit if you if you if your principle then leads you to these to going against your moral intuition to the point where you won't even poke someone in the ribs to save abject misery from every other human being then then you've just got a faulty ethic. You see what I mean? Like it's the no, intuitions no, no. which are the important bit. It They're is, the core of it. They're the actual feelings that you should be following. And it's the complete other way as around. Opposed to, if you have, uh, yeah, I know. I guess that's. Well, I mean, that's the dispute, right? Like um, we already, you already conceded on this earlier. If you have this feels over reels ethic, then you necessarily can have contradictions in your ethics, right? Which makes them false. Yes. You're. It's specifically an anti-ethic. You're specifically evading what you should do. And you're just going, well, I think I should do this, therefore I'm going to do it. Just, yeah, just, but at least, I'm, at least I'm preserving my intuitions better than you are. Well, that's not a good thing. Well, it is for all the all the people that I, the lives that I save from the alien. No, no, it's it, it's a horrible that's a good thing, thing to have uh, this whim worship. That's bad. You shouldn't do it. I, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Uh, whim worship is basically where um, you basically go, well, I want to do this, so therefore I'm going to do it. Oh, on a rather whim. Than, I, I understand. I want to do this, um, and I should do this. You're not thinking about what you should do. You're just thinking about what you want to do. Right, then that that's the that's complete anti-ethic, right? Um, well, under your definition, it is, yeah. I mean, I don't think no, so. Just under, just by what ethics means. It's about uh, which ends you should pick. Not about which ends you actually are picking. Ethics is the the I guess trying to get down on paper in a logical or as logical way as you can your moral intuitions. That's not correct at all. <laughs> okay, well that's what I think it is. What do you think it is? 
ethics is uh, the science which deals with um, uh, determining which ends men should pick. Um, yeah, that that's not ex mutually exclusive to what I said. I don't think. Well, no, no, no. Because then you're what you're saying is you're you don't care which ends you should in fact pick. You just are going to pick which ends you do in you do indeed pick. That's you're not concerning yourself with whether you should do it. You're just concerning yourself with whether you want to do it. Yeah, because the should comes from the intuition. Otherwise, no, where no, else it does it come from? It, where does it come from then? Well, it's it's just true. Like you know, it's um, it doesn't like if I say that the uh, if I believe that the sun is hot, my belief in the sun being hot doesn't make it hot. It just is hot, and either I am right. correct in my belief. But morals might... don't exist in that way of being objectively out there. Well, they do in the world, right? They do exist. No, they're not. They're just thoughts in your head. No, no, no. We're not... Because then, then you know, if you're, you're proposing that you don't actually have an argument, right? You're saying, well, I think this way. Then it's just going to be a ma battle of I think this, I think this, and there's no conclusion, right? I'm saying... But you seem to be saying that not, morals don't just, exist outside of humans, right? I, I, well, like, it, you, I'm not saying this you not go like along a, and find... A I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you go along and you find an ethics tree and you pluck an ethic off the ethics tree. It's not like I a hope physical not. Yeah, object. That would be fucking nuts. Right, it, but it, it, ethics no. do exist. There are, there are true ethical statements and false ethical statements. It's in the same way the law of non-contradiction is true. It's correct. It, it exists, right? But it's not... But Yeah, yeah but what is, the thing in the, what is the thing in the world that it's corresponding to which makes it true or false? It's the intuitions that you have. No, 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 no. It's um. What else would it be? What is it? I I don't know what you mean. Like, uh, what by what do you mean by correspond? Like, you it's just... just correct. Like, what what is the law of well, correspond? First, to? first, like, for a statement to be true, uh the law of contradiction. Like, what does that correspond um, to in the real? I don't know. Different it's people like think different things, things right? Like, I guess. Like, it's not a physical thing. It's uh, it's talking about a relationship between things, right? It's not. It's saying. I mean, log I think logic is its own special case. Logic is its own special case because it doesn't, it's like maths. It doesn't necessarily pertain to particular things in the world, but ethics does. No, no, no. Then ethics is. You the see same, what I mean? Because right? Ethic... I'm, I'm logically deriving these ethics. No, logic will never, t logic can't tell you what to do. Yes, it can. It can only, it can only say whether your, your arguments are valid or not. It's like the, um, yeah, there's a name for, for this, but I don't know what it is. But like the idea that, um, yeah, logic is like maths or something. It's just like, does X follow from Y? All that. It's like, it could be symbolic. Like, right, symbolic and... logic doesn't necessarily... Symbolic logic, how can it tell you how to act? It can't, it, because there's no content to it. It's just like, whether or not the thing is consistent or not. No, no, it's not just about consistency. It's about consistency with reality. Like, uh, I was talking earlier about objectivist ethics, where... Um, you know, if you are living in reality, if you're choosing reality over unreality, then you're necessarily presupposing that life is of uh, is good, that life is a is a value for you, right? That is what you're presupposing that. So it's true that you should live. That is true. But there you go. Um, you've just smuggled in your you've just smuggled in your um thing in the real world, which is determining the action, which is the life, and you thinking that that's a good thing. So you've got logic, and then plus you're adding in the your principle of liking life I, or I something like this and then you're getting I, I, I derived it i didn't smuggle it in i explicitly stated right here's why it's correct i didn't just sneak it through the sally port or anything um yeah okay but so but you still um included something other than logic itself in your argument right and i'm saying that that no, is no, what I you need to do logical argument and that like, I'm, it, um, it, 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 a logical argument doesn't mean it doesn't pertain to reality. Like, if it's a correct argument, then it does pertain to reality in some way. Like, yeah, it, but we, we're arguing over whether or not logic itself, without, um, the, can you derive um, what actions you should do just from logic? And I'm saying, and you seem to be saying that you can, and I'm saying that you can't. You need, you need some additional thing, like a, something about life or something about utility, and then through logic you can determine what actions you should do. But without adding that extra thing in, then it doesn't tell you shit, right? You don't need to add anything extra in, because you can have an 
a moral axiom like life is good, right? You couldn't contest that. If you tried to contest it, you'd have to first accept it to be true, right? That is an axiom in the same way that the law of non-contradiction is, surely. Why? Why can't you contest it? Why? Because you contradict. Why you contradict yourself? Because you should just kill yourself instead of arguing or something. Yeah, if you if you truly believed that uh, life was bad, then you'd then you'd get done with it, right? Um. Yeah, I suppose so. Maybe you're too lazy or something. I don't know. But then still, you are. You think, uh, life, life is still good because you know it would be a bother. Uh, to get to attain death, yeah. right? You're still presupposing life. Okay, so from that principle, then why can't I say there's certain um uh what do you want to say? You should treat different conflicts, some with violence and some not, to maximize the value of life being good, and so you do it that way. So you've got your principle that you agree with, and then on that basis, you are determining, you're trying to maximize life because you think it's good, which you agree with. And so then that's how you determine your, um, which conflicts and how to deal with them. It's it's not merely maximizing life. It would be be per se anti-life to, as I said earlier, to propose any ethic other than the NEP, any, I should say any ethic which negates the NEP is per se anti-life because the NEP is the only legal ethic the only property norm, which can, in principle, allow the survival of humanity. All the other ones, uh, they are either particular and thus false, or uh, they would imply the death of humanity. And by the way, I'm just going to go to the toilet and fill up my water bottle, if you don't mind. Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, I'll be back in a second.
Right, I'm back. Yeah, I just feel like there's you've got two different arguments in this for the argumentation ethic, and one is basically that you don't think that there is any valid principle which you can use to <clears throat> delineate between two conflicts, and then you've got a different argument which is to say that to argue is to presuppose that violence is not valid. Well, they're really... And those seem like two different separate arguments, but you you seem to just kind of jump between them in such a way that like. No, they're, they're really I don't know, I can't. The, the same argument. Basically, what I'm saying, there isn't, you can't delineate between these different types of conflicts because uh, you were trying to do that. You were trying to say, well, I, it's universal within this one type of conflict where you should resolve it peacefully, but not in this other type. But I'm saying, I don't think there is this other type, right? So that's why I'm applying it to uh, dialogue in general, di disputes in general, as opposed to making particular. If you were able to show that no, this set is principally different, right, uh, relevantly different, then yeah, you could. It wouldn't be particularistic to talk about this differently. But I'm saying, no, it is particularistic because there is no different sets. That's what I'm saying. Right, yeah, so that's, that's the argument, that w which is that there's no valid principle which delineates them in a, in a valid way, right? Yeah, so therefore... That's what you just... That's yeah, basically so then, what you just outlined. Right, and then the other one is that just standard argumentation ethics, like, uh, because it has to be universal, uh, when you're reasoning about disputes, you are solving them peacefully, so you ought to solve them peacefully as opposed to violently. That's the presupposition. Yeah, so those are two different arguments, though. Are they not? Yeah, but the... They're, they're linked, right, because uh, the whole reason, the, f the first one is making the case that, yeah, it's universal, it has to apply to all disputes in general. And then the other one is like, okay, right, given it has to apply to all disputes, it has to be a peaceful dispute resolution as opposed to a violent one. Yeah. So you can't... Yeah, so it has to be universal supposedly, and then if someone tries to delineate on the basis of violent or not violent, you just reject that principle that they're basing that on. What do you mean a delineate base? All right, so yeah, like what I'm saying is I don't think there is any principle to split these sets up into ones where you should resolve them violently and ones where you shouldn't. Uh, I think your your principle is basically just, well, I feel like this way. I feel like it should be done this way, which is not an argument, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess because I don't really care um, so much about the the principle itself. It's more that the, the argument to say it has to be universal and we're not being, we're not using violence now, so we can, therefore, we can never use it. Um, well, you can never justify that, it. It's just that it seems invalid though that just doesn't seem like a logical argument because you're just assuming that the whatever decisions we have about um conflicts has to be applied universally i'm not assuming it but I'm, you're just, just i've shown it right because there isn't these two different sets where you can reason about them differently uh so it is just one set and any argument about the nature of that set would have to apply universally across that set just universality has to be a thing, right? If you're arguing yeah. about the nature of the set as a whole. And in arguing about the set of disputes in a, as a whole, you're arguing, so you're presupposing conflict avoidance. Um Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think that I don't think that's valid. I think it's just you don't like the principle. It's, it's not, not that you it's can't I don't give like one. It. It's I don't think there is such a principle, which is correct, right? Yes, yeah. But, um, yeah, the way that you say it, you've got um, a logical way of sort of saying it in which it's almost like you think it's impossible to have a principle given. It's what? like, you ju yeah, you, you sort of jump and universalize it, and, I, and it just doesn't seem like, I don't know why you would do that. Well, I'm not jumping to it, right? Because, uh, you know, you claimed that you could split this, the, this set of disputes up into two in a relevant manner and your way of doing that was 
uh, boiled down to you saying, well, I think these two things are different. Right, but that isn't... Yeah. That's not an argument. Your, your thinking one way or another doesn't change the structure of logic. Um, yeah. Yeah, I definitely don't agree, but maybe we should just leave it there. I think we've talked it to death. All right, that would work for me then. Yeah, no, nah, cool. Thanks. Appreciate the conversation. It was fun. Yep, you too. See ya. See ya. Fun, 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 fun. Uh, all right, yeah, so there's this guy, Jeremy JM. If I catch you from the server, then it was probably for a good reason. Um, I mean, yeah, if, if, if I kicked you for an incorrect reason, it didn't happen. Like, I, I don't do that. I kick people if uh, they're annoying or if I don't like them or anything like that. If you want to debate me, then I don't know. Email me or something. Anyway, that's the end.